Four and a half billion years ago, Earth experienced its first sunset. Back then, science has found our sun was 30% less powerful than it is today. Now, thanks to natural processes, the sun is getting hotter and the world is changing. President Obama has inherited a far different world from the world that many of his predecessors faced. While humans reach for the stars, back on Earth we're panicking about the state of our polar ice caps. As the President has made clear, he is committed to enacting a far-reaching new energy and climate plan. No one denies the climate on planet Earth is changing because the historical record shows it has changed many times before. Sea levels have been higher and lower than they are today and ancient ocean basins now make ideal sites for wind farms. But while we prepare to spend trillions on new forms of energy, it's important to actually find out if the ice is melting catastrophically or whether claims of human-caused climate change have given new meaning to the phrase aircon. In contrast to the news reports, the ice continent is not melting uncontrollably. While it's true that warm tropical Pacific Ocean currents are licking the edges of ice shelves causing breakaway icebergs, they're a consequence of natural El Nino events, not rising CO2 levels. Only a tiny area of Antarctica is affected by this, and later studies show the warmer West Antarctic region has often melted, naturally, in the recent past. A study published in the journal Nature claims to show average temperatures across the Antarctic warmed overall between 1957 and 2006. But what didn't make the newspapers was the inconvenient truth that most of that warming took place between 1958 and 1978. In other words, that warming ended a long time ago. In fact, the latest satellite data shows Antarctica has cooled in most places since 1980. Global warming believers claim the ozone hole is why Antarctica is cooling, but high-level atmospheric tests suggest the real picture is much more complex and that natural wind patterns manipulate the ozone hole more than man-made emissions do. According to global warming theory, disappearing sea ice is a major sign the planet is going to hell in a handcart. That's because white ice reflects sunlight and keeps Earth cooler. Dark sea, which is what's left when the ice goes, absorbs heat and helps make Earth hotter. So I guess you could call it another really inconvenient fact that there's more Antarctic sea ice this year than we've ever seen before. Record high levels according to data from the satellites that monitor the planet every second of the day. And one of the reasons for that record sea ice is also because more warming leads to more evaporation, more moisture going into the atmosphere. What goes up has to come down however, as rainfall as it's happening now, or snowfall when it's in freezing conditions. More rainfall, more snowfall, that cools the planet down. More to the point, more snowfall leads to more ice. Of course, if the ice was melting rapidly, that's exactly how global warming believers would spin it, with words like unprecedented and lowest levels in recorded history. But in truth, for both sides, recorded history is only really 30 years. That's when the first satellites began monitoring temperatures and sea ice extent at the poles. In other words, be very suspicious of those who throw the unprecedented word around out of context. They're probably just trying to impress you. In truth, 30 years or even 100 years is not really long enough to give you a good climate overview. But nonetheless, it's pretty hard to claim that Earth is heating up uncontrollably right now when sea ice has been growing rapidly. Even in the Arctic, as this graph shows, sea ice recovered earlier this year to be almost normal after a couple of years of melting. It's pretty hard to keep claiming that Antarctica is warming too, with a US National Science Foundation study published in the journal Nature revealing cooling of 0.7 degrees a decade, which equates to a drop in temperature of 7 degrees Celsius per century. Scientist Peter Duran gave an interview three years ago confirming cooling is still going on today. It is true that ice shelves break off, but humans have only been interacting with the ice continent for a hundred years and we may be panicking prematurely about it. Certainly the latest data suggests shelves break away quite frequently, which indicates the spectacular pictures on TV are probably nothing special or unusual in real terms. While Al Gore's movie An Inconvenient Truth was based on data in this graph suggesting modern warming was higher than anything in the past 1,000 years, studies of ice cores and other data show that claim is just plain wrong.
These graphs, for example, show hot red blips a thousand years ago that appear hotter than our current temperatures. Those hot blips were erased from the famous hockey stick graph used by Al Gore. One of the ice experts advising Al Gore for his movie was Lonnie Thompson. We have to do it. Sometimes when we talk about climate change, we talk more about temperature. You know, three degrees warmer, that will be tough, and, and there'll be extreme heat waves and things like that. This is a global problem. Many of the mountain glaciers in the world will disappear. If we were to lose 8% of the ice that is now on land, we're looking at 5 to 6 metres of sea level rise. Well, that's Lonnie's claim, but the bottom line is this. If Antarctica has been getting colder since 1980, and sea ice is hitting record levels even given our limited knowledge, it's hard to see where the meltwater to increase sea levels 5 metres or more is going to come from. But while Lonnie Thompson makes claims about a catastrophic 5 metre sea level increase, you've got to remember that sea levels have gone up and down much more than that in the past. All this land that you can see behind me used to be at the bottom of the ocean. Currently, it's 100 metres above sea level, and carbon dioxide has had nothing to do with that. They say journalists write the first draft of history. But the problem with that is that most journalists suffer from so much information overload, they find it difficult to remember what they once knew. For example, news bulletins have been full of reports about record Arctic ice melt, which politicians and global warming investors like Al Gore have been quick to seize upon. From Paramount Classics comes a film that has shocked audiences everywhere they've seen it. The Arctic is experiencing faster melting. The difficulty for Al Gore is that the Arctic melts quite frequently. These pictures from the late 1950s show US submarines surfacing through thin ice at the North Pole. They did it again in 1987, and even made autographed pictures of the event. At the South Pole, in sharp contrast, massive jet planes laden with cargo can land on the southern sea ice. If catastrophic global warming caused by warm gases circulating through the entire atmosphere was really happening, this US Air Force jet should have dropped like a stone right through the ice, especially as it's a summertime flight. In Greenland, the news media for the past few years have been full of scare stories. And what scientists here are discovering is that as the climate warms up, the ice sheet accelerates, driven by forces deep underground. What he's talking about is a discovery around five years ago that meltwater on the surface of Greenland's glaciers was soaking through to the bedrock below and lubricating the ice sheet like a children's water slide. During extreme melt events, big melt years, we see the ice sheet accelerate. We see it actually lift up off the bed and then accelerate. And so that's actually a new finding relative to the study of glaciology that the ice sheet can respond very quickly to climate change on the order of weeks or months, as opposed to hundreds and hundreds of years. Oh, wow! Whoa! Welcome to the epicenter of global warming. At least it was the epicenter up until last year. At the end of 2008, a conference of glaciologists heard, and I quote, Greenland's ice Armageddon has come to an end. It seems those melt pools and waterfalls you saw a few moments ago, while spectacular, don't play a very big role in ice sheet melt after all. The latest studies show the water trapped underneath the ice shelf rapidly refreezes again. As one study published in Science reports, ultimately this is not a cause of accelerated sea level rise. Next up on Aircon we look at some of the science behind the whole greenhouse gas theory. I'm Ian Wishart. News Talks AB, it is uh, 11 to 11 for Professor Bob Carter. Well, Hugh, just hang on a second. There's one question I want to make sure I ask you. Because, uh, you know, I've got a library full of books at home um, from, from all sorts of authors all over the world. If there is one definitive book that you would uh, suggest that um, any novice who wants to understand, buy and read, 
um, what would what would be the best one? Well, the irony is it's just been published, Leighton, and it was published uh, on Monday this week, I think, by Ian Wishart. Um, but I thought you'd say Plymouth's book from well, Australia. I'll, I'll come back to that. It's called Air Con, and anybody listening that is has a balanced view on this issue and really does wa- want to read around it a bit, if you only buy one book this year, mm. buy uh, Ian Wishart's book and give it to Granny for Christmas and so on.